It's a new year for balloons, and in this video I will be listing some things that I think should be fixed or implemented this year. This will include both bugs and functions that I really wish for, so let's get right into it. First off is the Chinook. Being able to move towers is an amazing feature, useful for both late game and other challenges. But unfortunately, you cannot move a tower onto frozen water. Which is a problem in late game because you may want to get super monkeys early to start ultra boosting them and then moving them onto a frozen portable lake or natural water to then upgrade them into a sun temple to give it the carrier flagship buff. But sadly, you cannot do that. Speaking of the carrier flagship buff, the next thing on our list is a bug with that particular buff. The buff is given by both the carrier flagship and the nav arc and is supposed to be given to all water based towers plus sun temples placed on water. But every tower placed before you create the carrier flagship or nav arc will not get the buff, as you can see here. And this is not just a visual bug. The buff is actually not there, as you can see from the damage testing I'm doing right now. In late game runs, this is normally not an issue, because after getting the nav arc, you can get the carrier flagship after you have placed all your sun temples on water. But what if you don't have the space for one while doing a particular map or challenge? then you would have to create all your sun temples before creating the nav arc, so it would be pretty nice if this was fixed. While we're talking about paragons, imagine how nice it would be for testing purposes if we could have paragons, the VTSG and bosses in sandbox mode, and be able to set the degree like in some mods. For Ninja Kiwi to implement full support for mods is probably a lot of work, but enabling a few towers in sandbox shouldn't be that time consuming. And while we're at it, allow us to set a higher round limit in the challenge editor. Right now, round 300 is the max, which poses some problems for testing late game stuff. Some things are easier to test in sandbox and some others in the challenge editor, and some things are pretty much impossible to test and requires mods. And also you can't use powers in the challenge editor before publishing it by first beating your challenge without powers. So right now, you can't really test with powers in any other way than a real game or perhaps with some mods. Another thing that would be cool for testing is if we had some in-game stats for buffs, debuff damage and cooldowns. Let's start with debuff damage. Right now, if you have say a super brittle that causes balloons to take extra damage, that extra damage is counted into the total of the tower that does the damage. Imagine if we could get this separated and see how much extra damage has been done by each tower because of the debuff, and perhaps a total count on the debuff tower. And for buffs, imagine if we could have a stat that shows the attack speed multiplier of the original attack speed caused by all your buffs. And for cooldowns, if you could see the cooldown time and the reducement multiplier. I think all of this would be really cool because I love testing and statistics. Now, for late game, there are a few things that really would make life better. To begin with, and probably the most important one, is to fix the hotkeys. Right now, you can have 12 key bindings for abilities, which is not nearly enough. If you have more than this, which you often have, you could be unable to bind Adora's Blood Sacrifice ability or the Engineer's Ultra Boost to a key. And this is a big problem, because you cannot use those abilities with your mouse in late game because of the intense lag. If you try and do this with a mouse click, it will register twice, causing you to sacrifice or ultra boost the wrong tower. So the abilities that can be binded needs to be increased. In my 477 game I had 22 abilities that I could use, so it needs to be increased by a lot. And about the lag in late game, of course it would be nice if this could be reduced. A lot of people wish for a setting that minimizes the projectiles to reduce the lag, but honestly I tend to believe as many others that it won't affect the lag very much. The problem I think lies mostly in the number of calculations that the game has to do. But the setting would still be nice, because in late game you don't see the balloons whatsoever, the whole screen is just filled with projectiles. So it would be nice with a setting that either minimizes the projectile size to nearly nothing, or puts all of the balloons on top of the projectiles. I've also seen people asking for more rewards for late game. I myself don't care too much about it, but some suggestions that I've seen is to perhaps give a 1 in X chance of getting a tier 5 insta monkey instead of a tier 3 or 4 when reaching a really high round like 2 or 300, and maybe create an achievement for beating a really high round like 300 on a difficult map. 
And the last few things on my list are some quality of life stuff. For example, it would be nice to let us target the Engineer Paragon's laser sentry the same way we do the Dartling Gunner. And imagine if you could techbot Adora's Blood Sacrifice ability. To do this you would have to implement a new feature of some sort, for example allow you to deposit cash into Adora's pocket and then techbot that ability that burns, say, 5k each use, so that you don't have to stay by the computer all the time in super late game runs just because of this one ability. Those are the changes that I would love to see eventually make it into the game. Let me know in the comments below what you would like to see, and like the video if you enjoyed it, and I will see you next time.